In the last video, I showcased how to create AWS S3 bucket, create user in the identity and access management service, create access key, install Databrick CLI, and securely store all our AWS credentials to avoid exposure when we start performing data processing in a matter of moments. I'm going to put the link of the video in the description so they can watch and see how to perform all that before you come to this video. So, in this part two, I'm going to show you how to read data from the S3 bucket to Unity Catalog using Databricks Notebook. In addition, we're going to build Databricks AI BI dashboard using the data from the AWS S3 bucket. We're going to schedule the notebook and dashboard for continuous data integration. So let's get started. Again, if you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and toggle on the bell icon to be informed of new videos. So let's see where we stopped in the last video. So I'm going to come to my CMD and then the last thing we did is to list all the scope in our AWS dash cred. And then we can see we have the AWS access key ID and the AWS secret access key. Now I'm going to come to my Microsoft Azure Databricks and for this, I need a cluster that is up and running. So I'm going to click on compute and I've got this DB cluster which is up and running. Now, if you don't have one, just click on this create, provide all the parameters and then click on create cluster and it's going to be ready in a matter of minutes. So once this is ready, I'm going to come to my catalog and then for this operation, I created this AWS underscore data catalog that contains the AWS sales schema schema. So for now, we do not have any data. That's fine. Now, I'm going to come to this recent, and in the recent, I've got this read data from AWS S3 to Unity Catalog using this original book, and we can see we have all of this code. Now, since we've already stored all our AWS access key ID and the secret access key in our database secret scope named AWS cred we're going to proceed to retrieve them in our notebook. So for that, I've got this AWS access key ID variable, and then we are calling the dbutils.secrets.get, and then for the scope, I'm passing this AWS dash cred, and then for the key, I'm passing this AWS dash access dash key dash ID, and then we're doing the same thing for the secret access key. So we have this dbutils.secrets.get, and then for the scope, the scope remains the same, and then for the key, we are passing this AWS dash secret dash access dash key so i'm going to proceed to run this code now before i do that it is important i attach the cluster to this notebook so i'm going to click on this connect and then i can grab that db cluster and this is now attached so i'm going to press control enter to run the code okay so this completed successfully now i'm going to proceed to configure spark to authenticate with amazon s3 service in order to access the files we uploaded to the s3 in the last video so for that we have this spark dot underscore jsc dot adob configuration and then we are setting that to the file system dot s3 a dot access key and then we are passing this access key variable we defined here we are doing the same thing for the aws secret access key that we defined at the top so i'm going to proceed to run this code to authenticate to our s3 and this executed in a matter of seconds that's cool now we can proceed to define the path to our s3 so we have this variable named s3 underscore path and then this is equal to the path to my s3 bucket now how do you get this it's really easy i'm going to quickly come back to the console.aws.amazon.com and then i can see this is my cornerstone analytics one now i've got all of these files now the easiest way for me is just click on any of the file and then i can see the s3 url here so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to come here so that's exactly what i pasted in now instead of using this Sales 2016, I just, you know, replace that with start. It's going to give me all the files in that S3 bucket, and that's the path to my S3. And then we are reading the CSV file into a Spark data frame. So we have this variable name df equals spark.read.format. Now our data is CSV. And then for the option, we specify the header equal to true because truly our data contain headers. And then we also infer the schema so that we can have the Date column treated as a date column and integers treated as an integer not string. And then we are using the load method to load the files from this location. And then we just want to perform a simple data processing by extracting the year from the other date column. So for that, we have this DF. We are actually you know creating it within this DF. So we have this with method and then the name of the new column then we use the year function which is imported from the pyspark.sql function. So we also calling the name of the 
other date column and then we're going to be writing into our unity catalog as a delta table so we have this df that write the format as a delta table and then the most going will be overwrite if it exists and then we use the save as table method providing three namespace the name of the catalog first dot the name of the schema and then the name of the table sales data now i'm going to proceed to run this code amazing so this executed and that's beautiful now i'm going to go to catalog and then i can expand the aws data catalog expand the schema and our data is now available sales data now i can see under the overview tab we've got all of the name of the columns the data type and in the last um short video i made yesterday night i can see this amazing turbo sign which tells me that this is a managed table and i can also see the benefit of the unit catalog managed table which are all of these points that's cool now when i come to the sample data i can see all the columns the order dates so you can see the region subcategory product sales and the year and then we can also see that the schema were correctly inferred we have the order date treated as a date column the sales treated as integer and then it's also treated as an integer that is absolutely cool now we want to go ahead and build our dashboard so from here i can use the or build the dashboard okay it's not here for now now i can go to the dashboards under the sql and i can create a new dashboard so this is going to load now it is important we connect our data for so i'm going to click on the data tab at the top and then i'm going to grab a select table so i'm going to grab that from the aws catalog and the aws sales schema and i'm going to grab the sales data and click on confirm so we have the pointer to our catalog so let me see no way out selected so i'm going to quickly select the way out and then we can run this so click on this and then i can use the serverless starter way out and once this is connected in a matter of seconds i can see the code executing and then we should be able to see the preview in a matter of seconds okay so our data is ready so we can see all the columns and so on so i'm going to come to the canvas and let's just build a small dashboard we're not actually learning how to build dashboard so i'm going to click on this add a visualization and then we have this widget and then in the widget i can use the ai assistant i want to see the total sales per month in each region so i'm going to type in the region and just press enter let me see what's going to give me okay cool i love this start column chart amazing so i'm going to accept this and then we have the sales 2015 or the data for the 2015 to 2017 now don't forget in our s3 we loaded um the 2015 to 2017 which is absolutely correct now i'm going to quickly just use another visualization here let me just make this to be a smaller one and i can move this up a little bit so i'm going to move it up here and we just expand this here so let's also see the total sales or sales by region and okay cool so this is acceptable for us we can choose whatever we like no as i've mentioned we're not building we're not, we're not learning how to build the dashboard we just want to see these numbers cool now i'm going to proceed to save this okay so publish and we'll click on publish so this is already done I'm going to click on cancel i can go back to the dashboard i can see that here new dashboard now it's going to be a good idea to give this a name so i'm going to go back to the draft and then i can call this one um, aws sales dashboard and once i'm done press enter to commit and that's cool now i want to go to my notebook so go to the recent and i want to schedule this job and load more files into the bucket so i'm going to now it is important we use a cluster here not a sql um, warehouse otherwise this code here will throw an error later so i'm going to click on schedule and then i'm going to go to advance and uh, let me just call this one um, aws data integration so i'm going to just come to the schedule now i want to schedule this for the purpose of demonstration every minute just one minute and i'm going to stick with this time zone and i'm going to choose not this serverless starter now. i want to choose this existing all purpose compute otherwise there's going to be an error when running this part of the code so make sure this is selected and then click on create now in a production environment you don't want to be running every one minute but just for demonstration i'm going to run every one minute so click on create so the schedule is now up and running and i'm going to go to my dashboard and i'm going to quickly go to the same dashboard turn it on and i'm going to in the publish 
turn on the schedule and i want to schedule this for every minute also and every other thing is fine i can use um, the serverless here this is fine and click on create so we've scheduled the two jobs that is cool now i'm going to go back to the notebook and let me go back to that place and we're going to see when i click on the schedule we can see the first schedule is actually going on and all things being equal this should give us this green check mark amazing i can click on that and i can see any data that has come in no data thus far let me go to the bottom we can see nothing here. now i'm going to come back to the console.aws.amazon.com and i want to load more files into this now we've got 2015 to 17 and based on our dashboard we can see we have this um, stack column chart for 2015 to 2017 cool now i'm going to upload more files so i want to click on add more files so amazing so i'm actually ingesting the 2018 to 2025 and i can scroll down and click on upload so we can see all of them are actually coming in and you can see upload succeeded absolutely fine so we don't need to do anything in the aws region or service again all I need to do is just come here. I can just for the sake of argument come to the recent and come to the notebook and I'm going to click on the schedule and let me just allow another one minute to see the data. Now don't forget we have 2015 to 617 before but we should be able to see up to 2025. So I'm going to quickly come to the catalog. Let me come to the catalog and then I want to go to the AWS and I want to see the schema. Click on this. And I can just check here yeah, in the sample data. We should be able to see data from 2018 and so on. Ah, there we go. So you can see they're just arriving. We have 2018, 19. And when I scroll down, we should be able to see lots even up to 2025. Cool. So this simply means that this is working fine. And I'm going to come to the dashboard. And in the dashboard, I'm going to quickly come here. And then we can see for now, this is actually issuing 2017. Let me just quickly, for the sake of argument, trigger the refresh and we should be able to see more numbers at the bottom amazing so we can see we have the data for the 2019 around there and then we can see for the 2020 2021 around there 2022 up to the 2025 so this simply means our data integration is working as expected so this is how we can use database notebook to load data continuously into this big unit catalog and build a real-time ai bi dashboard on top of it so i want to thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you've learned something new if you are again new to this channel or you've not subscribed please subscribe to this channel because there's a lot to come Thank you for watching. Bye for now.